Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today's Saturday, February 24th. Hope everybody had a good week of trading. Let's take a quick look at the markets and we'll jump into my trades for the week. Uh, let's start with VIX. So VIX, man, they, uh, they're they really trying to keep this thing under 16, it looks like, right? I mean, last week had a big push up, got shut down below 16. Monday, made an attempt towards 16, got shut down. Tuesday, creeped into 16 territory, got shut down. They just got absolutely crushed. Uh, going into the end of the week, VIX ending at 13.75. I would say, you know, there's a pretty high probability that we'll get some more volatility pumped in as we get closer to the election later this year. But sure seems like they are trying to keep it pretty compressed until that starts becoming uh, a little bit more on the radar. S&P, new all-time high. 51.11.06. NASDAQ, I believe, also hit a new all-time high. NDX hit 18,091.62. Uh, taking a look at the Russell. Uh, I would say that the Russell was the weakest of the bunch, but my good, my good buddy Elliot uh, let me know that I say that way too often. So, Elliot, how about the Russell was the least strong of the big four indices? Does that work for you? Does that work for you? Uh, Dow was also a uh, strong new all-time high. Gold and silver up for the week. Actually, silver had a little bit of weakness. Gold was up for the week. Notes and bonds, uh, a little bounce the last couple days. 10-year yield settling in at 4.253. Why is my platform freezing up? There we go. Oil, kind of choppy back and forth. Natty Gas caught a bid uh, the first part of the week and then gave most of it back Thursday, Friday. Uh, and the grains, at least soybeans and corn, just continue to get crushed. I actually, I got, I got to call my buddy who's a, uh, a corn trader, actually deals with farmers and silos and that kind of stuff. See what's going on there. I've got some short premium in corn and it's just continues to get annihilated. If we look at corn going back to... Uh, when was this? May, April of 2022. It was at 824. Now it's at 399. Just getting absolutely slaughtered. Apparently the farmers planted too much corn last year. Uh, Euro and the pound, a little bit strong, meaning US dollar relative, uh, a little bit weak. And then Bitcoin chopping around 51, 52,000, closing at 51,600. All right, so that's a look at the market markets. Let's take a look at my trades. Uh, so the I had a I had a pretty decent week from a PL standpoint, but more importantly, you know, I talked about last week how I had a little bit of a blunder and ended up taking a big loss on just a stupid mistake. And and this week, um, I really was disciplined. I guess is just the easiest, flattest way to say it. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with my trading this week and <clears throat> nice PL uh, to boot. So, uh, so here's all my zero DTE. Let's take a look at these, uh, broken down a little bit deeper. So I've got, I, I just released to, uh, to our community, my trade plan for March. And part of that includes <clears throat> a, a challenge account. So what I've done is, is, you know, historically I've always had, several accounts, but I'm, I'm trading different strategies in each account. And so I was always, you know, trading a fixed number of contracts and I would do that for a month and then I would tweak that. But what I've decided to do here is, is I've decided to remove all strategies out of this account, except for the four that I'll be using in this, what I'm calling a challenge portfolio. And uh, so I'll just be trading zero DTE and just four specific strategies and, um, and I'm going to compound the profits. And so, uh, it'll just, you know, it'll give a better idea specific to that account and specific to those strategies. And it, it, uh, you know, I think it'll just be kind of fun and I'm calling it a challenge because it, for me, it will be a challenge not to mess with anything. Right. I like, especially if it starts getting to some decent size, um, you know, I will have a tendency to want to fiddle with it and change things and do, do things. So, uh, I've asked my community to keep me accountable on this and just to let it continue to compound based on a 
position sizing based on a percentage of the account size. And so here, here are the two, here are two of the things that I'm doing here. Uh, they're just, one's a one to one ratio. One's a three, two ratio. I uh, had a good week in those just two losses out of 13 trades. So plus 8,400 on those, um, on my AM trades, had two of those. One was discretionary, and this was a basically my Monday trade, but I did it on Tuesday because of President's Day. So I was trading, treating Tuesday like Monday, and that didn't work out well. Minus 6,700 on that one. And then I had a Thursday trade that was good for 1380. No, I'm sorry, that was Wednesday. Uh, anyway, 5,400 uh, loss on my AM trades. No FOMC. JSPs. So I had two regular JSPs, uh, one for minus 2,400, one for plus 1,400. And then I did a discretionary one, and this was really just looking at price action. And as price came down to the expected move low for the day, uh, I, I sold some puts, and I was going to cut them pretty quickly if we decided to continue to go lower. But they obviously worked out in my favor. So plus 8,700 on that one, so nice trade there. Um, NDX, so this is a new trade that I've, uh, that's part of my March plan. Had four this week. Uh, two winners, two losers, minus 410 net. And then Power Hour. Power Hour came through. Most of this is from my Thursday Power Hour where uh, I had three tranches plus a PM iron condor. Took it all to the bell uh, to expire uh, at max profit. So... Uh, you can see on the 22nd here, all three of these hit. Uh, also had uh, a 10 wide no stop version here, the Wooga, we like to call it, um, on Monday and another one on Friday. So plus 20,000 on Power Hour for the week. Next up, my PM Iron Condors. So two trades, one for plus 1,700, and that one uh, was it was uh, a little bit discretionary because it was outside the parameters, but I manually launched it. Uh, and then this one, minus 3,700, so net, net, a little bit red on those. Uh, zero DTE price action. So this is basically, these are discretionary. So basically, if if uh, my, my normal uh, zero DTE iron condors don't qualify, I'll do these on a discretionary basis, looking at price action. So a couple little winners there. Quiet midday tranche. This is a new one that I'm adding for my March plan. Just one of those plus 635. Reverse iron condors. Rick uh, had uh, uh, two of them on Friday. Both hit. Both were losses. This one actually got to 30% profit. My profit target was 35%, and then it ran away from me. A lot of people in our community got uh, 35% profit hit on that one. I did not. So took a loss on those two. And then, um, this one was just kind of a mistake. I closed out pretty quick and then a couple winners. So net net minus 2,300 on Rick's my O2 call calendar, one winner, one loser, a little bit red, one DTE iron condor, a couple losses, one small one minus 2,900. So that's it for zero DTE. Dynamic butterflies, one winner, one loser. Minus 910 between the two of those. And then dynamic calendars. Let me get all these checked. Make sure I cover. I didn't take trades in all these, but it's easier just to click all of them. Yeah, so minus uh, a little bit red should have actually been flat or a little bit green. This seventeen hundred dollar loss should have been more like a three to five hundred dollar loss. My platform froze up; I could not get out, and S and P just continued to rip higher and higher and higher out of range. So I ended up taking a seventeen hundred dollar loss on that. So that was kind of frustrating. Uh, winner here, winner here, four six loser, six seven loser. So minus nine ninety five on those. I uh, had a green week on directional futures, uh, plus 3,500. 
you know, I did, I noted here, so these three trades all in ES on the same day, minus 1,200, minus 1,600, minus 1,500. These are not my traditional directional futures type trades. <clears throat> I was, as I noted here, basically, I was trying to guess on direction. I did it three times. I just, I thought I knew, you know, one of those where you just think you know what's going to happen. Well, this is usually the result. You know, I, I, was, I was trying to guess on market direction in the S&P. I, I just had this feeling that I thought the market was going to go up that day for whatever reason. I took three shots at it. All three got stopped out. So unfortunately, that kind of dragged my, my P&L down for the week, but um, still positive. And so lesson, well, I wouldn't say lesson learned because I know I've had winners when I do that kind of trade. The good thing is, I'm, you know, I'm managing risk. So I'm not, I'm not taking risk outside of my parameters, but you know, it's just one of those things where not to mention, I missed the down move because I had this, just this bias that day. So for me, you know, trying to push away that ego, push away that that feeling of, I know what's going to happen, uh, push away those biases typically and just, and just trading based on price action, which with, which is what this is all about. The strategy. Um, I didn't do that on these three trades. This was just a directional bias that I had for whatever reason. And you know, that typically doesn't work the best for me. So anyway, uh, so those are directional futures. Iron duck had one small duck win for 165 uh, MOC trade. So a market on close and balance trade. <clears throat> this one uh, had a big number on Friday, 3.1 billion. I think it was to the buy side. So I got long, which typically will give you five points. And it, it did the exact opposite. It went against me. So got smoked for 4250 on that one. Option selling. Uh, one win in QQQ, MES, that's just a roll. And then lastly, portfolio margin trades. Green week for some closing trades on PM. Uh, minus 3,800 on this time fly, 455 positive on the ratio diagonal, plus 4,200 on this golden shark. Uh, this one is not plus 4,700. The uh, part of that trade has to expire. So that'll end up being net, I think, like 900 maybe. So uh, don't pay attention to that. Uh, $1,000 loser on this shark and a $1,000 winner on this reverse vertigo. So that is it. Uh, decent week. Look forward to a good week next week. Uh, everybody have a good rest of your weekend. Oh, by the way. We are in the process this weekend of transitioning to a new backend uh, platform for our members. So uh, uh, bear with us on that. There may, there's, we're in the middle of a little bit of a uh, technology issue that we're working through. Shouldn't, won't be a big deal. We'll, we'll, we should have it figured out by today. But um, FYI, that should be ready to go. And we'll uh, send you more details by email and post in the community of uh, some of the new enhancements that we have for you. Pretty exciting stuff. All right. Have a good weekend, all. Talk to you soon.